Well, good evening. Uh, today is June 16th, 2019, and this is another episode, another visit with the uh, Watchman Chronicles to discuss the following topic, Men Love Darkness. And again, our proof text for this is found in John chapter 3. If you will, please open up your Bible and we'll go and look at those few verses right now. John chapter 3, beginning with verse 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent out his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. By the way, just so you don't have anything else to worry about regarding men loving darkness, here's what John the Baptist said just a few verses down the line in verse 36, chapter 3 of John. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, but he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. If you have chosen or made a choice not to believe in the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, I'd be very concerned about that verse that was just written, that was just spoken. Why do men love darkness? Because they're sinners, because they have a sin nature, and they don't like to come to the light as in Jesus Christ. Jesus exemplified by his own lifestyle, by his way of living while he was on earth, how men should behave themselves. However, unfortunately, man with a sin nature, it's very difficult to follow Christ, so therefore he came as a redeemer, as a savior, and not as a judge for those that would do nothing more or less than simply believe on his name. Men love darkness for quite a number of reasons. We live in a very dark world right now. Have you ever noticed that? You ever notice how things are getting darker every day? We see what's going on in the streets of our cities and here in the United States. Of course, it's not just limited to the United States, but it seems like with this country here, this once erstwhile uh, Judeo-Christian or Christian nation seems to have thrown away its Christian identity in favor of politics, among other things. This week I received something from the ACLJ, the American Center for Law and Justice, headed by... Um, headed by Jay Sekulow, and Jay has been serving with the President of the United States, and he has an inside uh, scope of the operation in the office of the President, and also has the President's ear in a number of critical areas. However, here's one that I'd be concerned about. You ought to be really concerned about this one. This is another reason why men love darkness. Why do men love darkness? Because they love abortion. Here's what Jay writes in one of his newsletters this week. As radical late-term abortion laws are being passed in some states, other states are fighting to protect life. Uh, for example, uh, earlier this year we had this uh, pass in New York, and by the way, it was really quite the scene to see all the buildings in Manhattan, or many of the major skyscrapers built up, uh, lit up pink to celebrate that event, and to see the legislators and the governor and the state chamber in New York City cheer and clap when they passed a bill that essentially makes it legal to, to abort a child right up to and including the point of birth. Can you imagine that? That's what's going on in the good old USA these days, folks. Okay, but here we go. Here's our wonderful Supreme Court. Remember we thought that if we get certain justices in there that things would get better, that maybe there was a chance we might overthrow, overthrow uh, Roe v. Wade? Hold on now and hold the phone on that one. The Supreme Court has temporarily blocked a critical pro-life law, signaling that they will likely take up the case for full review. This has become a major abortion case at the Supreme Court. What is it? Louisiana passed a pro-life law that requires abortionists to have hospital admitting privileges to protect health and safety. So it's a pretty strict law that Louisiana has passed and other southern states that have taken up the lead there as well in the area of tossing out abortion and uh, with strict anti-abortion laws. However, just like certain in the federal judiciary, the district courts like to throw up blockages, now here's a case where the Supreme Court has actually blocked this piece of the voters' will in the state of Louisiana by saying, oh, well, uh, we're going to take it up uh, for full review later. Uh, 
Uh, we'll give it uh, some thought later on. We just don't want to do anything about it at this time, so we're going to block it. Well, thank you, U.S. Supreme Court. What a wonderful thing. Long before uh, December, excuse me, uh, correction, uh, June 25th, 2015, remember that one? That is when the uh, it was, became okay for uh, uh, homosexuals to have same-sex marriages. The U.S. Supreme Court voted to allow same-sex marriages. And months before, a number of state legislators had taken this up before and had uh, approved their own state laws permitting homosexual marriage. So the pre Supreme Court didn't jump on any of those and say, well, maybe we should block some of these pro-homosexual uh, uh, laws that have gone to these various states. They didn't do that then, did they? But now we're dealing with abortion. And now they say, oh, well, uh, this thing for Louisiana, there's a lot of clamor about that. Maybe we better take this up later. So they blocked it. So that means the folks in Louisiana don't have to worry about their pro-life uh, law taking effect anytime soon, thanks to the U.S. Supreme Court. We're not finished yet, folks. There's more of this coming down the pike. How about this one? In the churches, it's becoming more fashionable to become LGBTQ. Take a look at this. This was picked up from uh, a Prophecy News Watch, another fine magazine or newsletter I get from time to time during the week. And they, of course, are pointing out the fact that there are churches in the United States that are getting very progressive and that uh, LGBT this and LGBT that is very welcome in their congregations. Not pointing out the fact that homosexuality is a sin, but for the sake of getting people into the churches and making them feel welcome and comfortable without the Word of God, let them come in. That's a good deal, isn't it? Well, of course. Uh, so they say. But not so as far as God is concerned. Ever hear of Sodom and Gomorrah, back around chapter 18 and 19 of Genesis? What happened there? The sin was so abominable that God destroyed four cities at that time. Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim. Four cities of the plain were destroyed because of the blatant sin of homosexuality in the world at that time, and along the shores of the what we now call the Dead Sea. So the churches in America are taking up same-sex weddings, same-sex this, LGBT, rainbows. What, a, what an abomination. God created the rainbow, beautiful thing. Now they've taken the rainbow and totally perverted it and perverted the symbolism that goes with it. There's more to say on this topic of men love darkness because their deeds are evil. We just have a couple of little things. Men love darkness because they love abortion. Men love darkness because they love homosexuality. And they love the politics that goes with it. And oh, by the way, don't you forget, this stuff, funny money, rules the roost with those folks. However, it's still not late for any of them to get saved. As long as they have the breath of life, Jesus can come into their heart if they want him there. And he will change them. In spite of the heavy rhetoric from certain LGBTQ groups that you cannot be changed from your LGBTQ lifestyle because, after all, you were born that way. Excuse me, that's only half correct. You were born that way, yes, because it's a sin. You have a sin nature. But you were not born LGBTQ. So we'll try to take this up at a future time. And uh, we ask that uh, you will keep in prayer for the people who are gay because, frankly, they need all the prayer they can stand. So I'll call this an end for this week's Western Watchman Chronicles. And remember that uh, uh, the time is getting short. Darkness is upon the world, and soon the darkness is going to be so great it is going to be intolerable. God will have it so if he wants. So remember that uh, as you're going through this life, one day at a time, keep looking up because Jesus is coming soon. Good day.